Before we talk about the detailed uh, structures and the uh, components which are involved in the uh, dorsal aspect of the wrist and the hand, it is very important to understand the anatomical framework in the terms of the bones and the joints because if we talk about the muscles, all the muscles act on the joints and are attached to different type of bones. Similarly, if we talk about the nerve supply and the blood supply, everything is actually superimposed upon the skeletal structure which makes the basic framework or the support system in the anatomical context and that is why in the first part of this series of lecture we're going to talk about the bones and joints in context to the dorsal aspect of the hand as well as the posterior wrist so in this way, we're going to talk about the bones of the wrist and hand we're also going to talk about the joints of the wrist and hand and we're also going to talk about the joints of the fingers and thumb it is going to be pretty much the same as when we consider or when we discuss the uh, palmar aspect of the hand or the ventral aspect of the hand and the anterior aspect of the wrist because the bones and the joints and the structures remain the same in the context of both the ventral and dorsal aspect but still it is important to consider and discuss them before we move on to the other structures including the muscle connective tissues and nerve and blood supply structures. So talking about the bones of the wrist and hand, so we have the uh, distal aspect of the radius and ulna, then we have the uh, uh, carpal bones uh, which are actually uh, scaphoid, lunate, trochytrium, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and hamate. So these are actually two rows of four carpal bones after which we have metacarpals and after the metacarpals we have the rows of phalanges which is the proximal middle and distal in, uh, phalanges but uh, talking about the uh, uh, first uh, first digit or the talking about the thumb then we have only two phalanges which is the proximal and distal and we do not have a middle phalanx now talking about uh, if we look at this structure so the wrist joint is actually known as the radiocarpal joint uh, we are not including the name of the ulna in this joint because it has a very uh, small contribution uh, at the level of the wrist and even that contribution is actually blocked by the articular disc so there is no direct contact of the ulna with the scaphoid lunate and trochaeum in making up the radiocarpal joint and then after the radiocarpal joint we have the midcarpal joint in which we have a joint between the proximal and distal row of the carpal bones namely the scaphoid lunate trochaeum and pc forming the first row with the trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate in the second row and then we have the <clears throat> carpal metacarpal joints and after the carpal metacarpal joints we have metacarpal phalangeal joints and proximal interphalangeal joints and then distal interphalangeal joints so talking specifically about the wrist as we already discussed so the major joints we have the uh, radiocarpal joints and then the mid carpal joints and uh, the movements which are actually possible at the level of the wrist are actually uh, in terms of two degrees of freedom. We have uh, flexion and extension possible in one degree of freedom and the other degree of freedom is ulnar and radial deviation. And because of these two degrees of freedom, this joint also has a possible movement of circumduction. The major movements that occur at this joint are actually at the level of the radiocarpal joint but there is also a contribution by the midcarpal joint which actually enhances and complements the movement of the radiocarpal joint. So talking about the radiocarpal joint, uh, there are the movements possible are the flexion and extension, radial deviation and ulnar deviation. And as you can see here, so there is actually a direct communication of the radius with the first row of the carpal bones, but there is no direct communication of the ulna with the proximal carpal bones and it is actually blocked by that articular disc. So that is why if we talk about the components, so there is the proximal carpal row, the articular disc and the radius and there is uh, uh, isn't any contribution by the ulna to be more specific. Now talking about midcarpal joint, it is actually uh, plain joints because of the irregular shape of bones in terms of all the 
carpal bones and uh, there is a um, limited amount of movement possible and thus it actually contributes and complements the movements of the radiocarpal joint instead of having its own individual uh, movements in terms of degrees of freedom. So as you can see here this one is the radius and this one is the ulna and here we have the radiocarpal joint and after the radiocarpal joint this is the uh, first uh, or the proximal carpal row and then we have the second uh, or the distal carpal row. So between the proximal and the distal carpal row this actually joint is actually known as the mid carpal joint. Now talking about the first digit or the thumb it is perhaps the most mobile digit uh, specifically because of the function of the first carpal metacarpal joint which is a highly mobile joint in terms of its structure and function and it has a unique structure in terms of a saddle joint because both of its surface are concave in one orientation but convex in or the other orientation that is why it follows the concave on convex rule in one orientation however it follows the convex on concave rule in another orientation and thus it has two degrees of freedom but due to its accessory movements there may be uh, other accessory movements in terms of rotation as well and there's also a movement of circumduction possible because of two degrees of freedom. So carpal metacarpal joint uh, is one of those joints that I already talked about which makes the thumb as the most mobile digit. Then we have the metacarpophalangeal joint and the interphalangeal joint. As you can see there's only one interphalangeal joint in the first digit or the thumb instead of the uh, two interphalangeal joints in the fingers because there are only two phalanges in the thumb and that is why only one interphalangeal joint. The carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb as I already mentioned more mobile than the carpal much more mobile than the carpal metacarpal joints of the other digits however the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the thumb is less mobile than the metacarpal phalangeal joints of the second third fourth and fifth digits which are actually two which have two degrees of freedom whereas the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the uh, thumb only has one degree of freedom so carpal metacarpal joint is actually formed between the trapezium articulating with the base of the first metacarpal and as you can see here it is actually a carpal metacarpal uh, joint which is as already mentioned a uh, Saddle joint, also known as a modified biaxial joint, has a complex anatomy in terms of its orientation of the joint surfaces being concave and convex in orientation, both of these surfaces. And uh, the normal position is pad is perpendicular to the palm, or you can say the resting position for this. So the movements possible, as already mentioned, are two degrees of freedom in terms of flexion and extension and abduction and adduction but there's also movement of opposition and reposition possible which is due to the accessory rotatory movement of the carpal metacarpal joint but that is not uh, something that uh, a person can do voluntarily such so thus some uh, books or the in context of some authors we do not consider it as a degree of freedom so because opposition and reposition may be considered as a degree of freedom by some authors so that is why it is known as a modified biaxial joint instead of a biaxial joint but nonetheless it is not considered as a triaxial joint either. Now the movements possible as we already mentioned is the abduction, adduction, extension, flexion, opposition and reposition. Opposition is when we bring the thumb and the little finger closer together and when we move them away it's reposition, repositioning. Now, moving on after the carpal metacarpal joint, which is highly mobile, then we have the metacarpal, uh, metacarpal phalangeal joint and interphalangeal joint, which are less mobile. And as I already mentioned, the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the first digit or the thumb is less mobile than those of the fingers or the second to fifth digit because they are biaxial, whereas the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the first digit is uniaxial joint. So the joints that we have are the metacarpal phalangeal joint and the interphalangeal joint, other than the carpal metacarpal joint and metacarpal carpal phalangeal joint is a hinge joint thus it has only one degree of freedom and allows only flexion and extension. The interphalangeal joint on the other hand is uh, the only phalangeal joint in thumb as I already mentioned as in contrast to the fingers they have, which have two interphalangeal joints and it only allows flexion and extension as well thus it only has one degree of freedom as well.
Now talking about the joints and movements of the fingers, once again we have the carpometacarpal, the metacarpophalangeal, but we have two interphalangeal joints instead of one, which is the proximal and the distal interphalangeal joint. The second digit or the uh, second digit is also known as the uh, index finger. The third digit is known as the uh, middle finger. The fourth digit. Uh, is uh, actually known as the third finger or you can say the ring finger as well and the fifth digit is known as the little finger or the pinky finger as well now talking about the carpal metacarpal joint these are actually between the carpus bones or the carpal bones and the metacarpal bones and uh, they are non-axial plane synovial joints in contrast to the sedial bi sedial biaxial or sedial saddle modified biaxial joint at the level of the first carpometacarpal joint. It provides more stability than mobility and the fifth carpometacarpal joint which is that of the little finger is the most mobile and a small amount of a fifth finger opposition with that of the thumb is possible. However, when we move from the fifth carpometacarpal to the fourth, third and then the second, then the movement possible actually starts to decrease and the second carpometacarpal joint is the least mobile and even though that fifth carpometacarpal joint is mobile then the second third and fourth it is not as mobile as the uh, first carpometacarpal joint which is highly mobile in terms of degrees of freedom with having two degrees of freedom as well as the movement of opposition and reposition so metacarpal phalangeal joint uh, is also important because movement is initiated at uh, carpal metacarpal joint. So carpal metacarpal joint is important in terms of the movement of the metacarpal phalangeal joint as well. Now talking about the metacarpal phalangeal joint, these are the most mobile joints of the fingers uh, in contrast to the carpal metacarpal joint being the most mobile joint of the thumb. And these are also biaxial joints, but they are condylite joints and they are not saddle joints like the carpal metacarpal joint in the thumb and it is between the heads of the metacarpals which articulate with the base of the proximal phalanges and uh, just to remind you there are proximal middle and distal phalanges in the fingers these are these joints are also commonly referred to as knuckles and these structures are actually known as the knuckles <clears throat> Talking about the movements which are possible at the metacarpophalangeal joint because they have two degrees of freedom. So we have flexion extension or you can also call it as hyperextension and we also have abduction and adduction possible. Now in terms of defining abduction and adduction, when we move towards the middle finger which is taken as the reference point, when the any finger moves towards the middle finger it is known as adduction and when it moves away from the middle finger it is known as abduction or abduction so this is abduction and this is adduction and there are two interphalangeal joints in each finger and uh, because there are three phalanges and they only allow flexion and extension thus they are uniaxial hinge joints so that was all about the uh, joints bones and movement possible at the joints of the fingers uh, digits hands and wrist and i hope you learned something new out of it and thank you very much for watching scarlet.com keep on watching for more lectures like this and for more updates on these topics thank you very much